very stressful. Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning? If you are, go ahead and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's great to be bringing the Word of God to you this uh, weekend. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 127. And I just want to say hi to all our friends at Gateway Theatre. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 127. And the Word of God tells us, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who built it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gates. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence to be here with us this morning over here at TC and even over there at Gateway Theatre. We invite your presence to come. And Lord, I pray that you empower me that whatever I'm unable to do or communicate humanly, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to help me, Lord. And Lord, we want to bless our friends who are visiting here with us for the first time, Lord, we pray that this morning will be a special morning for many of them because their hearts will be touched by your love and they'll come to know you in a special way. We thank you for giving to us your word. We welcome you here. In Jesus' name we pray and I'll say, Amen, Amen. You know, this weekend is kind of like a divine setup and I, I don't believe it's a, it's, a, it's a coincidence that we just prayed for the educators and teachers. And you know, educators and teachers are... Uh, directly, as Pastor Eugene says, is very connected to the next generation. And it so happened that this weekend, we, we didn't have uh, Suntech for our services. And so what happened yesterday was all the teenagers and the Barnabas kids actually came into our 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. service. And then uh, three weeks ago, they were scheduling for the preachers and they put me on for this weekend, and some of you know that I'm the pastor put in charge of children and youth for FCBC. So I believe the, this weekend, due to a divine alignment and setup, God wants to speak to us about the next generation. And I'm going to show to you the sermon title, the sermon slide. And this weekend's sermon is entitled, Generation Go. You got to catch them all. Can you turn to your friend and say to them, Generation Go, you got to catch them all. And I saw some of you as you were saying that, your fingers went like this, okay? If you can't stop doing that, please come up for prayer later on. You need major deliverance, perhaps. And you know, we have heard at our 30th anniversary that FCBC is entering into a new season. And we're going to receive or we have received a fresh vision for us from God for the next lap. And, I, and, and God's promise for us in this next season for our church, found in Haggai chapter 2 verse 9 says, The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. Now church, I don't believe that the glory of God or the greater glory of God for us is going to come with us just sitting around and wishing and waiting for something to happen. You see, if we were to consider the verses that are before Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, the verses before that, you will see that the verses in Haggai chapter 2 verses 4 to 6, there are these keywords there. It says, be strong, be strong and work. Do not fear, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth. And in this new season and in this new lap, next lap that FCVC is going into, God is telling us to be strong, do not fear and work. And I believe that that is what God is telling us. And, 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 and the Word of God tells us, you know, the greater glory will come and together with it will come the shaking of the heavens and the earth. And we know that when we see the shakings of the heaven and the earth, what it means for us, as Pastor Eugene explained to us last week, it means that the prophetic clock of God is ticking and there will be many shakings and a great harvest, num a great harvest of souls is coming in. Say amen. 
So as we enter into this new season of seeing a great harvest entering into the kingdom of God, one of the key strategies I believe that God wants to show us this weekend that we must embrace is that of the next generation. Now, how many young people do we have in the house of God this morning? Go ahead and make some noise. Praise God, you're very positive. And Pastor Daniel has... Daniel Kong has shared with us and laid out for us the vision of FCBC. And we, and, and we need to catch this and embrace this. The next vision, the next lap for FCBC, the next frontier for us is no longer just Singapore, but it's going to be the whole of Asia. And when you think about Asia, and when you think about the children and the youth statistics for Asia, the numbers are pretty staggering. Now, the total Asia population is estimated to be at 4.4 billion. Everybody say, wow, that's a lot of people. And the estimated, listen, number of children and youth in Asia is 2.9 billion. Say, wow, wow. And that is like 65% of the total population of the people of Asia. Now, because of some categorization differences, I think 50% or more will definitely be accurate when we talk about the number of uh, children and youth in Asia. And what is God showing us through these numbers? I believe God is showing us that the next generation, given the numbers alone, is a very important generation that you and I in this next season must go and win. And it's also the generation that when they enter the kingdom of God and when they become disciples, it will also be the generation that will go in the last days as a mighty harvest force for Jesus. So can you help me turn to your friend and say to them again, Generation Go, you've got to catch them all, all right? Psalms 127, which we have read earlier on, I believe gives to us a divine blueprint to understand why and how the next generation is God's strategy for success and victory. You know, when we read Psalms 127, these five verses, what we need to understand is that we need to read this whole psalm as one complete message. And it's a whole, all the verses connect together to bring about one complete message from God. And the, and the psalms begins with an important premise. It says in Psalms 127 verses 1 to 2, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who built it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go, to, go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for He gives to His beloved sleep. Now church, listen. To build a house, to build a city, to build the household of God strong and secure, the psalmist tells us that we need to build with God and through God's ways. And God is our only true foundation. He's our only true protector who watches over us. Amen? And you know, to build our lives or to build our homes or even our ministries, our church, without God will be efforts that will be in vain. It will be efforts that will be wasted, meaningless, and unfruitful. And Psalms 127 not only tells us of the consequences of building without God, it also points to us the fact that God has given to us a way to build so that we can not just build in a, in a, in a wasted or meaningless or unfruitful fashion, but we can build the house of God His way that will be strong, that will have perpetuity and success lasting for generations upon generations. And you see, Psalms 127 verses 1 and 2 connects with all the other verses beginning with this word found in verse 3. And the word there is the word, Behold! Behold! If you do not want to build in vain, if you do not want to build uh, 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 in, in waste or in, in unfruitfulness, then behold. So in order not to build in vain, we need to behold, we need to see, we need to be sure to see, we need to be sure not to miss what is God showing us. And what does God want us to see? Well, God wants us to see in this season 
in this next lab, his strategy, his key strategies for us to build FCBC strong so that we can experience his greater glory. And so this weekend, we come to receive, to see, and to receive the heart of God, his plan for the next generation. And we come this weekend to answer this question, why must we have a heart to go and reach the next generation? Why must we have a heart to go and reach the next generation? Number one, we must have a heart to go and reach the next generation because they are our inheritance and therefore we need to embrace the next generation as a blessing for the church. Turn to your friend and say to them, it's your inheritance. Turn to the other friend and say, it's your blessing. If you are sitting beside nobody, just turn to yourself and say that, all right? Psalms 127 verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruits of the womb a reward. Psalms 127 verse 3 in the Young's literal translation gives us a clearer idea. It says, Lo, an inheritance of Jehovah our sons, a reward is the fruit of the womb. Brothers and sisters, FCBC, the next generation is God's inheritance and blessing for the church. In fact, it is God's blessing and inheritance and pattern for every city, every nation. And that is why one important application even out of these verses is that we need to pray for Singapore's low birth rate figures so that we, we, can, we can see a turnaround and being blessed. And, 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 and listen to me very carefully. When we talk about the next generation this weekend, we are not just talking about the biological children that we have in FCBC, meaning your sons, your daughters that you have brought into uh, church because you gave birth to them, all right? When we talk about the next generation that God wants to bless us with, we are talking not just about the biological, but we are talking about the many, many more children and young people that are outside the four walls of the church that God wants us to go and reach. You see, brothers and sisters, the next generation, it is on the very heartbeat of God given to us even in the Abrahamic covenant. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 to 18 tells us, I will surely bless you, God says. I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations of earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. And reaching the next generation, I believe, is the crucial and critical and perhaps the only way that the knowledge of God can spread and cover over the whole earth like the waters cover over the sea. Psalms 145 verses 4 to 6 tells us, One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your splendor and your glorious majesty and your wondrous, wonderful works. They will proclaim, they will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts and I will declare your greatness. Listen, church. If we lose and if we do not secure the next generation, then you and I will not be able to pass on our faith and the message of God and there will be no continuity or succession. And that is a, a worrying th a th trend that we are seeing happen in many, many churches all around the world. And you know, if you think about the great commission that God has given to us to go and make disciples, the great commission is actually about making and reproducing disciples, meaning it's about birthing, birthing and passing on faith to the next generation. And I think when we think about Jesus and how he made disciples and the disciples whom he called, I believe Jesus carried in his heart the strategy and the heartbeat of God even for the next generation. Now look at John chapter 13 verses 30, uh, verse 33 and the Bible tells us Jesus was speaking and teaching the disciples and he says to them little children yet a little while I am with you and, and Jesus in these verses was going towards the end of his ministry he was going to come to a time where he'll be going to the cross and he addresses his disciples as little children 
Now, there's something interesting here that we may have missed out as an important strategy and model given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what, what, what can we see from here? Bible scholars, as they have looked through the lens of the historical context in the days of Jesus, they discovered that actually Jesus' 12 disciples were young. Almost all of them were under the age of 18 and some as young as 15 years old. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you came to know Jesus when you were 25 years or younger? Wow. All right. A big number of you. And I think there's something here God is speaking to us about. And Jesus did exactly that, to call His disciples when they were below the age of 20. And I believe God is speaking to us in this next season of our church that we must begin to prioritize the children and youth as our target for evangelism and discipleship. Now listen to me very carefully, church. When we talk about having children and youth as our priority, when we talk about reaching the children and youth, we're not talking just about having a department or a ministry in the church that is called children's ministry or youth ministry. This next season that we are sensing for our church is that God is going to call us, every one of us in every cell, in every tribe, in every team to reach the children and youth for Him and to make them disciples. You know, it's unfortunate that sometimes the church of Jesus Christ is slow in understanding what God is saying to us, in understanding the heartbeat and the strategy, strategy that God is, is showing us. And you know, our enemy, Satan, seems to know better. And it is a fact that Satan, our enemy, is attacking, destroying, stealing our next generation and robbing us of our inheritance, which is supposed to be given to us by God. And if you think about it, this last week, our, our nation has been dealing with kind of like a crisis, the Zika virus, all right? Now, any one of you here, you have the Zika virus? Okay, if you have, we need to uh, get an usher to bring you to MOH or something. And this morning, I think I heard the report on the radio that we have crossed the 200 mark in the number of people with Zika. But if you think about Zika, the Zika virus, Doctors actually say that Zika virus is milder than dengue. But what is the real issue about the Zika virus? The real issue of the Zika virus, which makes people really worried, is the fact that it can harm and destroy babies that are still in the womb. In other words, it is a destruction and an attack on the next generation. And I think God is awakening us up to the fact that this is happening. And all over the world, the next generation is under tremendous attack. And we know that when we see the next generation under attack, it is a sign to us that our enemy, the evil one, is in panic mode. And when Satan is in panic mode and he, when he's attacking the next generation, it is a sign that God is about to do something powerful and great. Now, I keep very close to me a stack of slides and I try to update them as often as I can to remind myself of how the evil one is attacking the next generation and, and why we need to do God's work. I'm going to show, that, show them to you. And it comes from World Vision and some other sources. A raging war against boys and girls. Abortion, an estimated 56 million during the years 2010 to 2014, and that works out to be 125,000 abortions a day. Sexual violence and rape, 150 million girls and 73 million boys. Child soldiers, children, young children like my son, 7, 8 years old, taught to kill. 300,000 worldwide. Child Prostitution, 2 million worldwide. Child labour, 106 million worldwide. 78 million children are involved in child labour in Asia alone. Street children, 150 million worldwide. Malnutrition, hunger, disease, 600 million children in Asia and Africa. Orphans, 140 million children worldwide. And this 
next slide has just been updated. Teenage suicide, the report from Japan. 4,600 teens in Japan per year. 1 million suicide globally. 4,600 teens in Japan per year. 157,000 teens hospitalized for self-inflicted injuries in Japan per year. We need to pray for Japan. Just in case we are not aware, we have FCBC Sendai in Japan, right? And God, and, and for some reason, the evil one is just destroying the next generation there. Youth in Singapore, and the numbers are concerning. One in four are admitted from suffering multiple symptoms of depression from the age, between the age 18 to 25. Mental health is related issues. 600 youth treated in 2015 uh, in the Institute, Institute of Mental Health. Now, suicides, and, and we are told that the number is actually on the increase. And even as a youth pastor, I can tell you, we hear of cases of attempted suicide very often. And you look at the numbers there, it's close to 100 in the year 2015. There is an attack on the next generation and there's an urgency for us to do something to claim and to fight and to redeem the next generation for God. Amen? Now, we're going to do this uh, just for the next 30 seconds prophetically. We're going to stand together and we're going to take authority through prayer over the Zika virus situation in Singapore. Can we do that? Amen? Let's stand together, okay? Can, let's move faster because all of you said you're young people, right? Three, two, one. <laughs> okay? And if it's not convenient for you to stand, you, you can just remain seated wherever you are. But we're going to take 30 seconds to take authority. And I told the congregations uh, yesterday evening, this is what I want to believe God for. That because we prayed this weekend, we're going to see the report improving. Okay? Now, this morning I opened my papers. There's already one positive news. And the positive news is that they are discovering that the virus strain in Singapore is possibly and quite unlikely to be the same strain as the one in Brazil. And which means that it, doesn't, it may not cause the symptoms uh, that they are seeing uh, for the babies that are unborn in the womb. Okay, so that's one positive news. But let's pray that the numbers will go down and we'll hear positive report. You want to know whether your prayer is powerful? You pray and next morning you open the newspaper and you just keep flipping to see whether God has answered it. Okay, that's what I do all the time. All right, at the count of three, let's pray for 30 seconds. Let's take authority. One, two, three. Come on, begin to pray, church, right now. Just begin to take authority over the Zika virus. Let's begin to pray that the numbers, the occurrences will begin to go down in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to take authority over the, the schemes of the evil one to destroy, to attack. And we come against the Zika uh, virus uh, issue in Singapore right now. The different regions that are experiencing it, the fears that are happening. Come on, we begin to take authority just for 15 more seconds begin to pray right now God can reverse the situation that the good news the good news of our prayer the answer to our prayer will be shown very very clearly and we know that God is giving to us a prophetic sign to affirm and confirm his message for us this weekend we thank you Lord and in the mighty name of Jesus we command the Zika virus situation to improve right now to cease right now we take authority over the evil one and we command every attack on the next generation to cease and we redeem them, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a mighty clap of praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Please be seated. And just one more thing. There are some fears and overreaction to the Zika issue and, and I was just flipping through the papers two, two days ago and there are reports that there are some women that are considering abortion because they are worried of the Zika situation that something will happen to their baby and they are already carrying a, a fetus in the early stages and they are considering abortion. I can't remember whether is it local or overseas. Now, please pray against that. Okay? And if you have friends that are thinking about that, please tell them no. Don't contribute one more to the slide that I show you. Okay? Well... The next generation is a blessing for us. Turn to your friend and say to them, the next generation is a blessing for you. 
You need to embrace this blessing. And I'm going to give you some reports from our G-Kids, FCBC uh, Children Ministry, on how the next generation has been a blessing. Okay? And this, this is written by the pastors uh, as a report to me. And this is what they say. We believe that Super Camp, which was the camp they had this year, will be super because God will release the supernatural amongst the children in the camp. We train the children to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit for people whom the Lord wants to reach out to because He loves them so much. We called it a treasure hunt with love. I think there's a picture up there. You can try to guess who that pastor is there. All right. The children were told to wait in God's presence for clues, words, or pictures, supernatural things. Now, there was this 12-year-old girl. She released a word. She was at a super camp. And she said, you know, there's a boy here uh, called Lucas wearing blue and God wants to minister to you in the area of your studies. Now, as the pastor in charge of the camp, I thought that there was only one boy named Lucas in the camp. And the pastor noticed that that one boy who was named Lucas wasn't wearing blue but was wearing white. And, you know, so the pastor started to rationalize and say that, hey, maybe just to encourage the girl, you know, that her word was, was uh, not accurate, but, you know, it's, it's good, you know, uh, maybe encourage the boy to still come forward. And so the pastor actually was, wanted to edit the word, go up and edit the word, make it not so specific. But before the pastor could actually say the, the or try to edit the word, there was another boy by the name of Lucas that came to the front to receive the word. And the pastor didn't know that this other boy called Lucas was there. And this other boy whom the girl released the word for was called Lucas and he was wearing blue and he came to receive the ministry released by this 12-year-old girl. Come on, let's praise the Lord, all right? Now, Clarissa, a Barnabas club leader, these are leaders that go and serve in the camp. I was asking God for an answer about taking on a leadership role in school and God used a boy, P5 boy Shem, to affirm God's words to me, to accept the role that, that I was going to receive. And this leader said, I was crying when I went forward to be prayed for. I guess I was not expecting God to speak to me about this at the camp. I was amazed at how God used the children to speak to so many people at the camp. I realized that God was also growing my my faith as I served him amongst the children. One more from this Barnabas leader, Si Hui. She says, being, leader, being a leader at a camp, the mindset I had was just to go there to minister, to serve. But as we were waiting upon the Lord, a girl came up and shared that she heard God spoke to her about praying for someone who had lost a loved one recently and has yet to move on from the pain and loss. That moment I heard the word, I knew right away that message was for me as I had recently lost my grandfather after he had passed on for two months. I was struggling emotionally and deep within, within because he was a very dear person to me as I grew up with my grandparents my entire childhood. It was a difficult period for me even after his passing for the months ahead. And even though I prayed many times for God's peace, I knew in my heart I could not let go. Peace filled my heart as I bought out my eyes from all the grief I was feeling within as I received prayer from this little girl and the pastor. And she says, To date, I find myself set free from the burden in my heart as I, as I struggled to let go previously. And I find myself moving on better and not being too emotionally burdened with the loss. I can only say thank you, Jesus, for blessing me with this time as He used the children I was serving to bless me. Come on, go ahead and give God praise right now. Amen. <laughs> the next generation is put into our midst. The next generation is given to us as a tremendous blessing. The next generation is a good inheritance that God is giving to us and He's telling us, do not reject the inheritance, do not reject the blessing, but receive it and embrace it. And God wants us this weekend, church, to embrace the next generation, the children and the youth in our hearts. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 to 6 says, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Parents, leaders, just listen to, to me uh, for a moment. 
God is speaking to us this weekend that there are some of us here, parents or leaders, disciple makers, our hearts are turned against the next generation. Our hearts are turned against our own children, our own teenagers that we are bringing up because of perhaps disappointment, perhaps because of the challenges that we are facing in trying to parent them, in trying to disciple them. Well, if that's how you are feeling, God says, don't do that. Instead, turn our hearts towards them and not against them and embrace them. And if you belong to the next generation, this is what God wants to say in turn to you. Don't rebel. Don't despise your parents or your leaders who are trying to parent you and trying to disciple you. And there are young people here, and yesterday there were many young people in the services. I told them, if you are rebelling against your parents and your leaders, you need to repent and be reconciled with them. You know why? Because Malachi tells us that when our hearts are turned against the parents, when our hearts are turned against the children and the next generation, vice versa, there will be a curse that will strike the land. It is a serious matter in the eyes of God. But when our hearts are not turned against, but instead turned towards the next generation, and the next generation's hearts are turned towards us, then God will come and bring about a breaking of the curses, and He will release His blessings upon us and upon the nations of the earth. Amen. And if that's what you're carrying in your heart, anger, hatred, disappointment, a sense of rebellion, vice versa, whether elders against the children or, or the other way around. When we open the time for ministry, come and allow the Lord to minister to you. So why must we have a heart to go and reach the next generation? Number one, because they are our inheritance and therefore we need to embrace the next generation as a blessing for the church. Can you turn to me, turn to your friend and help me tell them, embrace the next generation. Secondly, we must have a heart to reach the next generation because not only are they our inheritance, they are our warriors. And therefore, we need to, we have to empower the next generation as transformers to the nations. Psalms 127 verses 4 to 5 gives to us this picture. It says, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Now, there are powerful imageries given, us to hear, given to us here from God's Word. First, there's the imagery of the quiver full of arrows. Now, if you think about a quiver that has no arrows, or if you think about a quiver that is running out of arrows, it's not going to be much use against the enemy. In fact, you'll lose the fight against the enemy the moment your quiver starts to run out of arrows, right? How many of you have seen people when they are fighting, you know, even using arrows, etc.? How many of you have seen them when they run out of arrows, they use the quiver and just the bow and try to throw at the enemy and say, you, 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 you can die, okay? Uh, it's not going to work. You need the arrows. And God is speaking to us as a church that we must not run out of the next generation, but we need to keep filling up our church with the next generation by going out to reach them. And one application for us as a church is this. FCBC currently is about 30% children and youth, meaning that we have 30% of the congregation that are children and youth. And that is a good number. But we want to believe God that in this next season, we're going to come up with plans, we're going to come up with strategies to gather, to bring that number up to 50% or more. And, and listen to me, all right? It's not going to happen by biological reproduction. Okay? All the ladies here, if you just ping ming the shen, okay, that means you just do your best to give birth. It's not going to happen because we know that the, we know that the figures are, are, are not, uh, not positive. So it's not just going to happen by biological, we cannot depend on biological replacement to bring the numbers up to 40% or 50%. In fact, if we 
depend on biological replacement, which some churches make the mistake of doing, is going to keep going down to very, very low numbers. How we keep the numbers up is that we go and reach the next generation. Amen? Now, so that's the imagery of the quiver full of arrows. Then there's the imagery of arrows in the hand of a warrior. You have a picture there. Can you see the arm with the arrow? Okay, those, those are my arm. No, just kidding, right? Now, the arrows of the olden times, if you have watched movies, have watched uh, pictures, arrows of the olden times need to be sharpened, right? And, and the stick that carries the arrow needs to be shaped and bended to make sure that the sharp arrow head and, and, and the, precise, the precision of the stick would fly with deadly precision. And, and, and when you think about the one who fires the arrow, what finally makes the difference is that the warrior who fires the arrows is a person with steady hands and is experienced and is seasoned in firing the arrows. Now, church, God is saying to us that without our discipleship, mentoring, sharpening of the next generation, they cannot be launched effectively into their God-given destinies. In fact, if we try to let these arrows go wild and try to fulfill their destinies by themselves, they will go off course and they will become wayward. And the truth is also this. Every arrow we sharpen, every arrow we make precise and strong, these arrows will grow up to be the future warriors that will do the same for others and they will conquer the enemy. You see, church, there's a very important truth here. If we mobilize the next generation without the hearts and the hands of the fathers to guide them, you won't have a God movement. Let me tell you, you will have a rebellion. And young people, listen. Now I'm speaking to young people. If you do not allow people to disciple you, if you do not allow your spiritual fathers and mothers or even your own parents to empower you and to bless you and to help you fulfill God's destiny for your life, it's going to be a problem. You know why? Because if you don't find your destiny in God, young people, and God's destiny for you comes through the blessing of the previous generation upon you, if you don't find your destiny in God, young people, the devil will give you one. And I can assure you, money back guarantee, that if the devil gives you a destiny, it will be a destiny that will destroy your life. And that is why if your hearts are turned in rebellion towards your leaders, towards your parents, you need to turn back because if not, you're on a path to destruction. And that is why, church, listen carefully. God's way is not to separate or isolate the next generation from the adults. And we cannot, as a church, make the mistake of saying to ourselves, hey, let's keep the children and the youth out of sight and out of mind. No, they're just really noisy. They are so jumpy, as in they really like to jump around. Let's not do that, you know. No, God's way is not to isolate them. And the key point here is that we need to keep our next generation closely connected with us. Amen. We need to keep them connected with us. And God's way is that the generations must move together to bring revival and transformation to the nations. We see this principle in Acts chapter 2, verses 17, and then also in verse 21. And it says in Acts 2, In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. When the sons and daughters, the children, when the young people come together, together with the old men, what is going to happen? Verse 21, It shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When the three generations are put together, there will be a mighty outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts to bring about a great revival of souls. Amen? So when the sons and daughters, the children, the youth, the Lao youth, like myself, I mean spiritual fathers and mothers, when we move powerfully together, God is going to bring a revival. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a mighty clap of praise right now. 
the way we clap, we sound like Lao youth. Let's, let's clap like youth. Okay. <laughs> Next generation. Amen. That's better. And you know, if you notice in these verses, while old men dream dreams, and I hope none of you are doing that now in church, because if you are dreaming dreams, you are probably asleep. The next generation prophesy and see visions. Now, this is not to say, oh, dream is bad, visions are better. These are just descriptions of God's given anointing and God's given role to the different generations. And God's given anointing for the children and the youth is that they are futuristic is that they are action-oriented, is that they are transformational, and when we move together with them, listen, we can begin to confront and speak against the enemy and take authority and take down our spiritual enemies at the gate. And that is why Psalms 127, the last verse tells us, we will not be ashamed when we move together with the next generation, we can speak against the enemy and even overcome them at the gates of cultural influences. And you know this principle of the power of the next generation in this season, even of, of, in our world out there, is, this, is, is discovered even by people in the marketplaces. The executive director of United Nations Population Fund observed, and he says, over the next decade and beyond, if we are to solve the most pressing issues of our time, we need to tap into the dynamism of youth movements and young social entrepreneurs, for they have the potential, and I like this part, to disrupt inertia and to be the most creative forces for social change. They can disrupt inertia. When we find ourselves stuck and we find ourselves not moving, the young people are going to come into our midst under the anointing of God and tell us, you got to move it, move it. You got to move it. All right? They're going to tell us to move. They're going to, move. They're going to get rid of inertia from the church. And you know, one example of a next generation person who is bringing transformation out there is this uh, person by the name of Anthony Tan. Now, how many of you, you take a uh, grab cab or grab car? Okay, not many of you. Um, because most of you, you have your own BMW, right? Bus, MRT, and you walk, right? Well, Mr. Anthony Tan is the founder of uh, Grab Taxi, Grab Car, and with over 3.6 million downloads of the Grab Taxi app around the region, Grab Taxi has become the market leader in Southeast Asia. And you can see a picture of Mr. Anthony there, right there. And he's actually a believer, and he spoke at a marketplace ministry event in Singapore last year. And this was written about him. Listen to what was written about him. Simply put, Anthony understood his life's mission, which was to make a social impact, a social impact by empowering the lives of taxi drivers. And he was bold enough to walk in his divine destiny. Anthony was able to grab hold of the Father's blessings through the Abrahamic covenant. Well, grab hold of the Father's blessing. Maybe that's why he named his company Grab, okay? And Anthony credits God for 99.99% of his success. Very humble guy. He says, that's it. I'm just 0.01%. My contribution is merely being a part of the right family, being in the right schools, having the right partners, the right PR agency, the right media, and above all, being at the right place at the right time. Now, what is interesting about Anthony is that Anthony had godly counsel along the way that led him to uh, grab taxi's uh, success that we are seeing today. And they say this, when faced with sabotage by his business enemies, I wonder which company that is, his first reaction was to retaliate. But listen, his mentor, Andy, Andy Mills, which, who is the former CEO, CEO at Thomson Financial and a fellow Harvard alumni whom both met at the Christian Fellowship, advised restraint. And you know this Andy Mills, CEO, Thomson Financial, Harvard alumni person, you know what did he advised Anthony when he wanted to uh, get back at his, um, his competitors? This, this, this disciple said this, Anthony, if Jesus was to run Grab Taxi, how will he deal with this? Wow. Very, very wise words, right? W, WWJD, what would Jesus do? 
And because of that, this, life's man, this, 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 this man's life is transformed. And one of the slogans for Grab Cab is transforming lives with every ride. Now, one young person came up to me and said, Pastor, Grab Taxi gave you commission, is it? To publicize for them? I said, no. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe after service today, all of you will go and take Grab Taxi home or Grab Car home because you want your life to be transformed with every ride. But jokes aside, this is a generation transformational warrior making a difference in the marketplace. And the key thing here is that someone believed and discipled him and empowered him to do what he's able to do today. Now, there are many parents and leaders and they come to me and they ask me this question, Pastor, can you give me that one advice about how, that one key about how to disciple my child or my youth? And over the years, I've thought, to, thought, thought through this question, and, I, and, 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 and this is the answer I gave to them. You know, what empowers your, your child, or what empowers the youth that you're leading or discipling, what empowers them most, listen, is the consistency of our own faith and faithfulness to God. If there's fire, if there's commitment in our lives to God, they will catch the same. And, I, and I've discovered this more than 20 over years working with young people. The truth is that when they see inconsistency in our lives, inconsistency and lukewarmness in our love for God, it really, really destroys their faith. It really, really causes them to be disillusioned. You see, what one generation tolerates, the next generation will end up embracing if as leaders, if as parents, we tolerate lukewarmness in our walk with God, if as leaders, as parents, we tolerate impurity, we tolerate unholiness, we, 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 we tolerate a, a, a cold-hearted commitment to God, then they will catch and embrace the same. And this weekend in church, perhaps the starting point, or maybe even the restarting point, because we have messed up for, for some of us, is that we come back first, and return to our first love for God so that we can have something to pass on, so that we can have the fire to pass on to the next generation. Amen? But I want to bring you a good report. I want to bring the church, the family, a good report that the next generation in this church is rising up. Amen? And they are doing great things for God and they are answering God's call and fulfilling their destiny. I'm going to give you th uh, three testimonies of three pastors, next generation pastors that are working here in FCBC. And I'm going to describe their stories to you. And I want, to, I want you to try to guess who they are. Okay? And if you guess correctly, you will get a grab cap right home free. <laughs> and you, you just got to claim it by faith. Okay? <laughs> and, and it's going to be given to you by faith. <laughs> okay? Running out of time. This pastor came from a poor family background due to his father's gambling addiction. In sect 2, his form teacher led him to Christ, but he backslided in the army and in 2001, rededicated his life to Christ in FCBC. He joined a cell group, but he did not take God seriously. Now, this one I'm going to give you free because I have to mention his name, okay? In 2002, this, this person, he heard Pastor Caesar's teaching about Abraham and, 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 and he was still not serious in his... Uh, faith, but he heard Pastor Caesar's teaching about Abraham and the call to be a father of many nations and to make disciples. Now, when he heard Pastor Caesar's teaching, he was shocked. He was shocked because he realized God was putting his finger right upon his life. You know why? Because for 10 years, this pastor, whose Han Yu Pinging name is actually Guang Han, but for 10 years, his Han Yu Ping name has actually been spelled wrongly and they spell it as Guang Ham, which is the surname of Abraham. All right, it's not surname, but Abraham. And so he started to take, take things seriously. And from there, he caught a vision 
to win multitudes of young people to God. And, 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 and therefore, he went to become a teacher for eight years. All right, teachers, educators, you've got to listen. He went to become a teacher for eight years. And in his time as a teacher, listen to this. This is incredible. God gave him open doors and opportunity to share Christ with at least 150 students. And do you know how many of them came to church? 80 of those students came to church, more than 50%. Come on, let's praise God. Amen? And teachers, I want to encourage you. God can use you. God can open doors for you to share Christ. All right? Now, so for Kwang Ham, I mean Kwang Han, in 2012, he and his wife, who is also a pastor, lost their child. Attack on the next generation. They lost their child one day before the EDD, one day before the expected delivery date. And my wife and I were there to walk through that time with them. And in their grief, they just took a step of faith and went to G12 conference in 2013 to Bogota to receive a breath of life. And when he was there in Bogota, uh, Kwang Han actually told God, said, God, if you want me to become a pastor, can you make, make Pastor Lawrence come and ask me about it? Okay. So he went all the way, flew miles and miles to Bogota to attend a conference there. And when he opened the Bogota conference booklet, he was shocked because on the, in the Bogota conference booklet, his picture was inside. His face was inside. I don't know where in the world they got his face for because he has never gone to Bogota before. And when senior pastor got hold of the conference booklet and opened the booklet and saw his face there, senior pastor, and this was reported by him, kind of jokingly asked him, hey, you want to be pastor or not? Okay. And, and he was shocked and he, he said, oh, no, it, it really happened. And, and at the same time, when he came back, I challenged him to be a pastor as well. And in 2014, he listened to Pastor Daniel Kong's message in his car on hunger and God visited him in a powerful way. And in 2015, he answered God's call into ministry. Let's show the picture of Pastor Kwang Han there. And he says this, as a youth pastor, I desire to give my life to win the youth of our nation for Christ and to disciple the next generation. Most importantly, I love FCBC and our nation and I aspire to be, a new, to be the new generation rising up in FCBC. Praise God. We should, be feel, we should feel proud that we have such people. And these are just some stories out of many, many. Now, the next person, okay, you need to try and guess this one. This person, she suffered from insecurity and rejection and was fearful to go to school. She was so fearful to go to school that there will be nights that she will just put, cover herself with a blanket and cry and cry and not go to school. In secondary two, her cousin brought her to FCBC and she joined her cousin and she was discipled by her cell leader back then to reach out and plant cells and she was determined even more so to do that when her school senior, who was only 15 years old, attacked on the next generation, committed suicide. Now, this person didn't do well in her A-levels. She couldn't get into a local uni, but she pressed on to win souls and make disciples. And while working part-time, she served in the girls' brigade, she served in Touch Young Arrows, and back then, Gateway Entertainment was having this Chinge festival and she went to serve there so that she can win people to the Lord. And at the same time, she was studying part-time for a diploma in counselling. Seven years ago, she joined FCBC as a youth ministry staff and she successfully worked on winning many, many teenagers through the Teens Excite program. Last year, she became a pastoral intern in FCBC and at the same time, while working, okay, at the same time, after four years of perseverance, she is completing her degree in counselling so that she could serve God even more effectively. Now, this person is someone we see often on the screen. And when you see her on the screen, you cannot imagine that she struggled with insecurity and fear. And she's famous for two words. See ya! Pastor Charmaine. Let's, let's show her photo there. And Pastor Charmaine says, our next generation pastors, as long as there are opportunities to serve and reach out to the youth, I will go. 
It may be tiring at times, but seeing their lives being transformed is one of the greatest blessings as I serve. And also, as I went through those down moments during my growing up years, I understood the importance of young people having God in their lives, and that is why I must share the gospel. I'm going to give you the last person, okay? This person, in secondary school, she was notorious. She was famous for her bad attitude and her bad grades. She mixed with bad company who took drugs and smoked. She said, she said the company took drugs and smoked. I don't know whether she took drugs and smoked or not. Now listen. At age 15, she was locked up for 12 hours behind bars at the Yo Chu Kang Police HQ for rioting with weapons. But it was actually the other gang that brought weapons. Later, when I show you her photo, you will really wonder, she can, she can go gang fight, man. All right? Now, the interesting thing is that because the police intervened, it actually preserved her life because the other gang actually brought weapons. Her parents were very hurt and disappointed with what happened, but they chose to stand alongside her and prayed and interceded, interceded for her. And amazingly, the, pol the police charges against her were dropped. She gave her life to Christ at age 15, the year that all these things happened. And just this July, she joined FCBC as a, a ministry staff. And quoting a worship song, she says, Indeed, God has given me the victory so that I could now run in my destiny for the glory of God. I will go. We must never give up on the next generation, no matter how difficult they may be, because God is at work. And this person, we see her leading us into the presence of God many, many times. She's a chili putty packed with the power of God. And it's our sister, Cheryl. Let's give glory to God. Wow. These are just three of many stories of young people, whether they're in full-time ministry or not, or just simply serving as lay leaders of the church. And things that they're doing out there in the campuses, in, in the universities, in the schools, wherever God has called them, they are doing great things for God. And they are the next generation that is in our church. And I gave you these stories because, listen, I want you to catch a glimpse of you and of me being their disciples, that there will be hundreds and hundreds of all these arrows being sent out and raised up by us and being sent out to bring transformation to the whole of Asia. That these group of people that we raise up as young disciples will not be consumed with, with, with the things of the world, but they'll be consumed with winning souls and doing the work of God. And all because there are church leaders, there are parents, there are the older generation who prayed, who discipled and believed in them. Now, you know, three weeks ago, I was ordained at our anniversary service and now I'm a reverend, right? And people ask me, hey, Pastor Roland, how do you feel being a reverend? You know, I say, I, I'm not sure, but I just hope I'm relevant, <laughs> okay? Now, in the days leading up to my ordination, I spent time praying and I said, God, can you show me as, as I'm going to be ordained? Can you give to me a very clear picture, a very clear mandate of what you want me to do in the next lap of my life and ministry? Because I'm going to go into my 20th year of full-time ministry. It's like, wow, so fast, I'm going to be 20 years already. And at the ordination, our senior pastors prayed for us and, I, and it was quite random because we didn't know who was going to pray for us but our senior pastors came to pray for me and when they released words over me I knew it was a very clear mandate actually not just for me though it was personalised for me but it's not just for me it was a very clear mandate for me for my disciples for my leaders for my family and even for us in FCBC and I'm just a vessel to make and help us fulfill that which God calls us to do. I'm going to give you some excerpts. Pastor Nina prayed this over me when she laid hands on me and she says, I want to bless you, Roland, 
with creativity that God will supernaturally give you ways, new ways of leading our future, giving them all the H.O. precepts of our Lord Jesus so that they can stand strong and be a front for kingdom living in the future, especially in Singapore and therefore impacting our neighbouring nations in Asia. And, and these words were the most touching for me. I bless you, Roland, with the love of Jesus for children that every child you see in our church, in our neighbourhood, you want to embrace them in Jesus' in Jesus' arms. And these words shook me up because at the G12 conference, there was a pastor who came to the conference for the first time and he's from Myanmar. And he was so excited to be at our conference that they printed 2017's calendar in advance. And he gave, and he was so excited and he gave me the calendar from Myanmar. And when I opened up the calendar for Myanmar, it was pictures after pictures of orphans from that country. And I'm not, I'm not exactly the kind of pastor that, oh, you know, I love to do orphanage work, you know. I, I know that that's not, how to say, my makeup. But I knew that God was saying something to me and to our church that if those statistics that we see about the children and the next generation in Asia is true, then there must be something that we need to do about it in our next lap. And then Pastor Lawrence came and he prayed for me and he laid hands on me and he said, Pastor Roland, the Lord gives, the Lord gives you a spirit of youthfulness. Now this part I really like. Okay. You'll, be ne you'll never be tired working with the youth. And I see a picture of you standing up and a multitude of youth behind you and you believe them not only to live a life that glorify God, but each of them will fulfill the destiny of God for their generation. I see you leading them to Japan where there are hundreds who take their own lives. China, Indochina, Malaysia, even Korea and the Philippines. And I see you leading them to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem into places where no one dare to go. For you'll raise up a generation that fear nothing but God. And it's, not, it's definitely not a word for Roland Lee, okay? It's a word for the next generation. It's a mandate for our church. And if there are young people here, and yesterday I told the whole of Teen Sex Act that came for the 5pm service, we better get ready we better get our lives in order. We better be serious with God because God has given to us a clear mandate to get up and go and win the next generation, not just in Singapore, but in Asia for God. Amen? Come on, let's go ahead and praise God right now. I want to bring the service to a close and I want to say a word to our friends, whether over here at TC or over there at Gateway Theatre, who are visiting with us for the very first time, and you have not invited Jesus Christ into your life, you're not yet a Christian. And you know, when we started reading the verse from Psalms 127, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, we are building in vain. And the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how rich you are, how successful you are in your career, if you are building your life around all these things or if you are building your life on your own with all these things, your life will be in vain. Your life will be meaningless and empty if you are chasing after all these things in themselves. And perhaps there are some of us here, our lives are already breaking down because we don't have God. And the truth of the matter is that this morning, God can help us to rebuild. God can come into our lives and be that strong foundation, be that true foundation to build our lives so that our lives will not be built in vain. And some of you here who have not given your lives to Jesus Christ, the starting place for you is to open up your heart to Jesus and invite Him to come in so that Jesus can build your life with you. Jesus can rebuild your life if it's broken, if your relationship in your family is broken, if your spouses are broken, if your parents are broken, Jesus can come and cause you and help you to have a restart and He can rebuild for you. Why don't we all just 
right now, just close our eyes and bow our heads right now. We're going to bring the service to a close very soon. All across this place and even over at Gateway Theatre as well. For some of our friends here who have never invited Jesus to come into your heart, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do so. And what you need to do is to pray this prayer with me. And this prayer is designed for those of us who have never asked Jesus to come into our heart. And But, but more than just saying those words, it's the faith that you have in your heart when you pray that will bring Jesus into your life. And as you pray this prayer with me, word for word and line by line, all the friends here in FCBC, we will pray together along with you. All right. So with all heads closed, every head bow, all, heads, uh, all eyes closed and all heads bow, pray this prayer together with me. If you have never asked Jesus into your life, but today you want Him to come in, pray this prayer together with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, come, let's pray 10 times louder. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you this morning. I open my heart to you this morning. I need you to come into my life, Lord. I need you to come to my life, Lord. I need you to build my life with me. I need you to build my life with me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me and wash me clean. Cleanse me and wash me clean. Remove the sins from my life. Remove the sins from my life. Be my friend and be my saviour. Be my friend and be my saviour. I open my heart to you this morning. I open my heart to you this morning. And I welcome you in. And I welcome you in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. With all eyes closed, every head bowed. If you have prayed that prayer with me for the very first time, I want to congratulate you and I want to know who you are. So if everyone's heads bowed and cl- eyes closed, except some leaders and, and, and people on duty, if you prayed that prayer with me, this is what's going to happen. At the count of three, when you hear me count one, two, three, whether over here at TC or over there at Gateway Theatre, lift up your hands as an indication to me that Pastor Roland, I pray that prayer with you. I pray that prayer with you so that I can bless you. I can see who you are. I can bless you. I can pray a prayer for you. All right? Count of three, lift up your hands without hesitation. One, two, three. Lift up your hands all across this place. Yeah, I see your hand there. Just keep it lifted. I see your hand there. People up there in the balcony, people over at Gateway Theatre as well. If you pray that prayer with me, just lift up your hands so that I can see you through the screen and just acknowledge you. Just keep your hands lifted because I'm going to pray for you. Just five more seconds, keep your hands lifted right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up those hands and even over at Gateway Theatre, if there are people there, lift up your hands as I pray for you. Father, thank you for these hands that are lifted. Thank you that, Lord, there are hearts that have been touched and their hearts that are responding to you. Father, we bless these friends whose hands are lifted, that Lord, beginning this day, something good, something new will happen in their lives. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can I invite all of us to stand to our feet? And as we stand to our feet, go ahead and give God a big clap of praise. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Now listen to me very carefully. This is what we're going to do. I saw a number of hands lifted up here. I can't see very clearly whether they are in in Gateway Theatre. But this is what is going to happen. I'm going to count one, two, three again. And when I count one, two, three, those of you who lifted up your hands, and perhaps you did not lift up your hands but you prayed that prayer with me, and you did not lift up your hands because you feel a bit awkward to do so, when I count one, two, three, I want you to bring your belongings and come to my uh, right, which is your left, and over there at... Um, uh, uh, Gateway Theatre as well There will be a pastor there To uh, welcome you Okay Now the reason why We want you to come forward Is so that we can Acknowledge you Pray for you again And then we're going to get Some leaders and pastors To spend some time with you Give you a Bible So that you understand What the Christian faith Is all about Okay Now So listen to me very carefully So whether you, li- you, p- you Lift up your hands Or you did not lift up your hands But you want to give your heart to Jesus and you pray that prayer with me, you come forward. Now, the moment I count one, two, three, FCBC members, listen carefully. If you brought a friend to church this weekend, when I count to three, I want you to turn to your friend and say to them, hey, do you want to give your life to Jesus? I'm going to walk now with you. Okay, so do that, all right? And over at Gateway Theatre as well, say to your friends, do you want to give your life to Jesus? If you want, I'll walk down with you. Okay, at a count of three, everybody do that, that have a that I've instructed you and they are already coming. One, two, three. Come on, let's welcome our friends right now as they make make their way forward. Okay, just come quickly and as they come, 
if they feel very shy to come, you come down with them. And if you brought a friend to church, you invite them to come down with you. Don't wait another day. Don't say tomorrow because you will never know when life itself can even end for you. So we have uh, people even coming down from uh, Gateway Theatre. Praise God, they are coming from over there and we have some, some more friends coming. Come on, let's keep clapping for them until they are, they are all here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some more people coming. If you are coming, please come quickly. Now listen uh, to me for a moment and our friend even over there at Gateway Theatre. I'm so happy for you. I see you coming forward. I gave my life to Jesus when I was in primary four and I've never regretted a single day of it. Now, as a Christian, it doesn't mean that all your problems go away, okay? Because that would be, that would be fake, all right? That would be, a disillu- that would be something, just an illusion. But the truth of the matter is that God is going to come into your life and you're going to walk the rest of your life with God in your life. And He's going to guide you. He's going to love you. He's going to help you. And He's going to cause you to make a difference in your life because your life is going to have purpose, okay? So we're going to pray for you. And if you just tilt a little bit and look at all these people around you, they are your new spiritual family, all right? Over there at Gateway as well. And like our sister Cheryl, if you ever need to go for a gang, gang fight, just call us, all right? There's so many of us now. We're just kidding, just kidding. Don't promote violence. Come on, church, let's stretch our hands towards them. And those of you in front and over there, over there at Gateway as well, just open up your hands, open up your hearts to receive. Father, we thank you for these friends who have come forward. We pray for them. We ask that, Lord, beginning today, the moment they step out of this place, they will experience the love of God, that they will experience the tremendous blessing of walking with Jesus every single day of their lives. Father, we bless their families, we bless their homes, we bless their marriages, we bless their work, Lord. We bless even, uh, Lord, their relationship with their parents and their loved ones. So, Lord, even as we uh, spend time with them, Lord, we pray that you grant to them understanding of what it means to be a son and a daughter of God. We are proud of them, we love them. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. So just quickly follow our pastor. They will lead you to a room outside. Okay, so, so just turn around and follow Pastor Simon. Just come, just come. And as they go, let's clap for them. As they walk down the aisle, it's like a new day. It's like a wedding day for them with Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to minister to us right now. I'm going to read the words from intercessors who have been praying throughout this service. There's a teacher here in our midst who has been discouraged at work and you have been thinking of leaving the te- uh, teaching profession. Well, God is speaking to you today to embrace the next generation and turn your heart to the next generation. So if this word speaks to you, just come forward and allow the Lord to minister to you. A sister in the house is facing a a failed marriage and God wants to guide you, God wants to help you and console you. So if that's who you are, we don't need to identify you necessarily, but you just come and share with the one ministering so that they can come and pray for you. Someone, uh, Someone the Lord is saying to you, do not quench the spirit, trust and obey. This word is the Lord wants to give couples who have been praying for a child Um, and it's your heart's desire, the Lord says, come and receive this blessing that the Lord wants to give you. A boy in dark blue who has rebelled and hurt your parents, you need to come and seek forgiveness first from God and then be reconciled with your uh, parents. And there are also parents here who are having difficulty with your children, raising your children and parenting. You come and we want to minister to you. But finally, I believe God has spoken to some of us and you say, Lord, I want to receive an anointing to reach the next generation. And and you don't have to be a young person. You can be an adult, you can be an old person, but you say, God, I want to receive an anointing for the next generation. And you have counted the cost and you are willing to pay the price. 
to go even to the next generation in Asia, you come forward and allow the Lord to fill you with His Holy Spirit. So the moment Pastor Roger leads us to sing, come quickly to receive ministry or perhaps other needs that you may have, come forward and we'll have pastors and leaders here to pray for you. Come, start to come right now. One, two, three. Just begin to make your way forward. Let's stretch our hands out to pray for these and if there are some leaders, sisters, uh, we need your help to come forward to help to pray. We are uh, short of uh, ministry people. So leaders, we need you to come. And if you are there and you don't have someone praying for you, just indicate by lifting your hands right here in front and someone is going to come to you. We have some sisters here on my left. And yeah, there's uh, two sisters here that need ministry. And over there at uh, Gateway Theatre, if you don't have someone ministering to you, some leaders will get to you, all right? And the pastor there will help to direct. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands out towards these, our brothers and sisters who are here. Let's begin to pray for them and release the ministry of the Holy Spirit over them. Whatever they have come forward to, uh, to be prayed for, whether is it healing, whether is it reconciliation, whether is it cleansing. And some of you here, you're asking God for the gift in, and of fruitfulness in your womb. Begin to receive that miracle right now in the name of Jesus. That God Himself will begin to give you the blessing of your womb, the blessing of fruitfulness in your womb. That God will confirm His word for us this morning through the power of the work that He will do through the Holy Spirit. And we break every fruitlessness. We, 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 we pray right now in the name of Jesus that the fruit of the womb will begin to bear fruit. Yes, and we begin to ask for cleansing upon those that are just turning our hearts in repentance and coming back to turning our hearts towards the next generation or towards our leaders or towards our parents. We ask for the cleansing of the Lord and the restoration of the Lord. And God says to you that there are some of us here, the next step that you need to take is the step of reconciliation to those that you have a broken relationship with. Thank you, Lord. So let's just pray for them. Just take 10 more seconds to release the ministry of the Spirit of God. God is moving powerfully here. You can see the visible work of God among our brothers and sisters who have come forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift up our hands as we, I just bless you and pray for you and over there at Gateway as well. If you are receiving ministry, just continue to receive, all right? Father, thank you for your word for us this weekend. We pray that, Lord, your anointing, your blessing will come upon us so that, God, as we run the next step for our church, you will give to us just the, the power and the ability and the strategies to reach the next generation for you. Lord, bless us as we go and cause us to walk strong in our faith so that we will be able to pass on the glorious work of God from generation to generation. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray and everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you as you go. If you are receiving ministry, you can just linger here for a while more. Allow people to minister to you. God bless you. And over at Gateway as well, God bless you. See you in church next week and bring a friend to church. Thank you.